This is Saving the Game, a Christian podcast about tabletop role-playing and collaborative storytelling. Recorded Thursday, November 29th of 2018, it's episode 142. In this episode, we discuss Samson as part of our Continuing Biblical Figures series. Plus, illnesses, tags, teasers, and actually, Samson is just awful. I mean, wow. Welcome to Saving the Game. I'm Peter. And I'm Jenny. And we have no Grant today. Yeah, that is the sound of no Grant. Grant is sick, him and his whole household. The uh-huh. uh, the strep throat has arrived in the Woodward household and is afflicting both children and both adults. Mm-hmm. It is really kind of awful and yep. we feel bad for the Woodwards and hope they all feel better soon. Fortunately, strep Jeez. throat is pretty treatable, Yeah. so I'm sure they will, but it is miserable to suffer through. I have had mm-hmm. strep throat and I did not like it. I'm sure you've also had to experience it at least once. Oh, I have many times. I have a, let's just call it like a ridiculous immune system that decides to work at really, and t- decides when it does and doesn't want to work. At inconvenient points. Also, uh, we've been dealing with a lot of strep in town, and this is like the first fall winter time where I have not caught, you know, the local viral throat infection going around. Well, you still got time, so don't do too much. Oh, please don't say those words. I've got two volunteers (laughs) who are down with it right now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm, uh, I'm fortunate. I wonder if this is the result of being the child of a teacher specifically Mm. because my mom Mm. would pick stuff up from school and bring it home but her adult immune system might have like weakened it i i have no idea yeah but many many moons ago back when phil klein was the police superintendent of chicago there were a bunch of very destructive protesters i think it was for the world trade organization or something Mm. like that that had caused a lot of damage and hurt some people and stuff in other cities Mm -hmm. and um he was like, all right, they're not going to do that in Chicago. You can protest, but you can't cause all kinds of damage and, you know, hurt people. Yeah. So he went out and he found all the smallest cops and all the biggest cops in the entire city and put the smallest ones in front of the biggest ones. So the biggest ones just look huge. <laughs> yeah. And then lined them all up on a bridge and like parked. This was like pre-police militarization, really. So he parked yeah. like some armored cars at the end, like you'd see like for... um like transporting money kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the protesters came over the bridges and were kind of like, we're good. We're just going to carry Me- our signs and do normal protester things. Yeah. And I, I like to picture that that's the kind of reception that germs get in my body because <laughs> I don't get sick very often. <laughs> I was sort of wondering where you were going with that story. And I thought you were going at like a sort of like how Samson would deal with that thing. <laughs> no, no. This was much more restrained and much less brutal than what Samson would do. Uh-huh. Surprise, surprise, guys. We're talking about Samson today. It's a biblical figures episode. Yep. As mentioned uh, in our previous bonus episode, bonus episode 17, uh, we're going to make these just like regular episodes because like the amount of prep that goes into these is a lot. Yeah. Just the show notes are so much more structured than most of our other like topics. Like what we did last time, for instance. Yeah, which was a few notes jotted in a Google Doc about, like, maybe we should talk about this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Biblical Figures episodes are now going to be regular Quasi-regular, yeah. We're, we're still only going to have, um, in this one, we're going to only have scripture from the actual story of Samson. And we're also not going to do a Patreon question in this kind of initial banter time is going to be shorter. So they're going to be a regular ish episode, but not quite all of the stuff that you'd normally get because we're down a host. So Mm -hmm. but they're still going to be numbered in with everything else. So eh, we might figure something else out at some point. But really, that would be mostly for our gratification rather than yours. For all intents and purposes, this is a regular episode. And I mean, it's going to all be tagged with the biblical figures tag on our blog. That's my job. I do that. I do all the tagging and stuff like that. So they're going to be consistently tagged. So if you really want to go through all of the biblical figures (laughs) specifically, just click on the tag at the bottom of the uh, blog post uh, that says biblical figures on it. Yes, this is one of the nice things about having a librarian is uh, really good like organizational this is, stuff in this is one of the few good things that has come out of my tumblr account i am really <laughs> good at consistent tags because tumblr won't do it for me all right then <sighs> well i'm i'm glad you do because i use very few of them and yeah anyway we should probably actually get into this so we've got mm-hmm. a couple passages of scripture do you want the one from judges 13 or judges 16 uh i'll take 16 
Okay. So this is Judges 13, 2 through 5. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And Judges 16 verses 28 through 30. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than when he lived. Which is difficult. Let's get into that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about one of the more problematic judges uh-huh in more ways than one like in, yeah. in, in, in both meta and actual text yeah and problematic here's the thing a lot of the judges are kind of problematic mm-hmm. you know and this mm-hmm. guy is at the top of that list so oh, yeah samson is a very mythic figure but yeah. he's not the most he's not the best role model and we're gonna get mm-hmm. into some of that yeah. Like right now. So yeah. we're going to kind of be unkind to this guy because the text makes it pretty clear he wasn't a great dude. Um, yep. We're going to rag on him because it's easy. <laughs> yeah. And because we kind of got to because the text yeah. does. His story is covered in Judges chapters 13 through 16. It's a decent chunk of Judges and it's mm-hmm. at the end. It's it bears mentioning it's a readable story, but. Unlike people like Joseph, who you kind of are like, yeah, okay, he messed with him a little bit, but he was a really good dude. Mm -hmm. You look at Samson and it's like, well, Uh. this sure is an example of how God can use even pretty bad people to get some stuff done sometimes, isn't it? Yep, Yep. it sure is. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. Take us away, Jenny. Sure. We start off with a family that has fertility issues. Uh, This happens a lot when you are in a time and place without proper health (laughs) care. Yeah. <laughs> and knowledge of like, you know, care of the fetus and that kind of thing. So we know Samson's dad's name. Uh, he's Manoah of the clan of the Day Knights. Uh, and as with so much of the Bible, we don't know the mom's name. We we just don't. But an angel of the Lord comes to her and uh, the angel says that she'll get pregnant real soon. And that's really cool. But she has to stop drinking alcoholic beverages and unclean food, which, to be fair, that's just good general practice because <laughs> fetal alcohol syndrome is really no joke. I've seen some results of it. It's uh, real bad. Don't drink when you're pregnant. Yeah, it really kind of sets your kid up for a bad life in a lot uh, of ways. So Yeah. Uh, the angel says that she'll have a son and that he is never to have his hair cut because he's going to be a Nazarite. Uh, so that means that... No grapes, wine, vinegar, or anything to do with grapes. Uh, Some traditions even extend that to, like, any alcohol at all. No haircuts, which also means no combing of the hair. You can brush your fingers through it, and some hair might come away as a result, but you are not allowed to cut your hair, and you're not allowed to comb it or brush it with a brush, because that will remove too much hair. And you can't touch human corpses. Which is interesting with Samson because a lot of people go from being living to corpses in his life as a result of him touching them. Yes. Forcefully with weapons. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Becoming a Nazarite is generally a voluntary thing that occurs for a period of time uh, determined when one takes the vows to become a Nazarite. There are two types of Nazarites, though, and the Samson-like or permanent Nazarites are Nazarites for life. Regarding the whole... No touching human corpses, grapes, and stuff like that. That all has to do with certain purity rituals. I think the tradition is once you have done an unclean thing, whether on purpose or by accident, you cut your hair and make a certain type of offering and wash yourself, and then you basically start the process over again. Anyway, so that's what Nazarite is. Uh, The angel uh, that came to Samson's mom goes away, and Samson's mom goes and tells her husband all about it. And she's like, hey, this dude came up to me and was like, we're going to have a son. And so Manoah is like, he he prays to God and he says, please give me more detail. (laughs) Like, (laughs) how how should we raise this guy? You know, like, we, we don't really know what we're doing here, apparently. 
Uh, God sends the angel back to them, uh, but neither Manoa or his wife recognize the angel like, as an angel. They're just like, oh, he's just this dude. And the angel basically repeats the same stuff. He's just like, yeah, no, just do what I told your wife and, and, uh, and it's fine. Just don't make him unclean. And Manoa tries to do traditional human, like, thankful things, uh, but the angel's like, um, I'm not human. Like, I can't eat your food. And Manoa's like, oh, what's your name? And the angel, the angel basically pulls a Spock and is like, you couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Which just makes... <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so the angel... Which is a heck of a thing to say to an ancient Hebrew, given some of the... Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure they had no trouble at all. It's the Anglophone tongue here, but the, yeah. the joke definitely pops up in my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the angel then tells Manoah that if he's going to make any kind of offering at all to make it directly to God, and while the offering is on fire, the angel goes up into heaven with the fire. This bit, I saw a couple different things for it. So, like, the offering was definitely on fire, it's not clear if Manoa set it on fire or if the angel set it on fire. I've seen different things about that one passage. The angel for sure went into the fire and probably to heaven, but that's not clear either. <laughs> so just to, because we're a gaming podcast, let's stop for a second and put a pin in this. Like having somebody who looks human reveal themselves as an angel by like, incorporating into flames and flying up to heaven is a pretty awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping, oh boy, kind yeah. of a sight, you know? It's like, there's some real imagery there. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely weren't human. Uh-huh. You didn't probably tell me quite everything I wanted to know, but that was sure an experience I just had there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, long story short, Samson gets born. And uh, every now and then, apparently, he gets filled with the Lord's spirit, the spirit of the Lord. And then we move on to chapter 14. Samson falls in love at first sight with a Philistine. And this is bad because Jewish people and Gentiles are not supposed to get married. And his parents tell him, hey, we aren't supposed to get married to Philistines. This is a bad idea. Do not do it. And Samson does it. <laughs> on the way to bring his parents to meet her, uh, Samson secretly kills a lion. A lion jumps at him out of the woods, and he kills the lion with his big holy muscles, somehow secretly from his parents, even though he's traveling with his parents. Yeah, so this is this is kind of the, the first real indication of... Samson is presented as having superhuman strength throughout this yes. entire thing. He is not just strong or tough. This is like wrecking big cats with your yeah. bare hands, pushing down stone pillars, ripping city gates off. You know, yeah. I mean, he is I think the really comparison, strong. The exact comparison made is something along the lines of he ripped apart the lion as he would have ripped a young male goat apart something like that it's like yeah it's just it's this very violent and brutal image mm -hmm. samson is like the closest thing that you get in the bible to the incredible hulk oh, uh, he's yeah, yeah. just unbelievably he, strong he just rage hulks out and, and it's described as like the spirit of the lord strengthened him and stuff like that so that he could rip a lion apart <laughs> yeah with his hands anyway so after he secretly kills the lion, he goes and then he talks to the girl and finds out he actually likes her. <gasps> ah! Ancient uh, culture and its problematic yeah. relations between the sexes, people. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. So then they hang out for a while, they get engaged, whatever. On the way to some kind of, I, I think it's like a pre-wedding party. Uh, on the way to the pre-wedding party, Samson sees that the lion he killed just has so many bees in it. It's full of bees. And the bees have Which made is this... a weird spot for bees to hive. Like, they don't usually yeah. hive in corpses. Not in corpses, no. Uh, I don't know about you, but we have ground wasps here. Yeah, we, we definitely get ground-dwelling hiving insects that fly <laughs> like yeah you know we get dirt daubers and yeah there's a variety of stuff yeah. ground wasps are the reason why i have a massive fear of wasps by the way when you step on them enough as a as a young young child that kind of uh scars you anyway uh the bees have made a hive in this lion 
It's full of honey, and Samson takes some of the honey to eat for himself and some to give to his parents. No mention is made of what the bees thought of this nonsense. Um, apparently, Probably just, nothing good. <laughs> yeah, uh, he just got the honey. Didn't tell his parents about the honey or anything. It's just like, hey guys, I, I got the honey. Anyway, at the actual party itself, Samson gathers together 30 of his buddies, and he makes a bet with them. And if they can solve his riddle, he will give each of them a bunch of fancy clothes. And the riddle is, out of the eater, something to eat, out of the strong, something sweet. And uh, nobody can figure it out, because Samson's a jerk who withholds key information that is required to solve the riddle. That's not a riddle. That's just being a jerk to your friends. Yeah, this is actually, this is very much, um, you know what this <laughs> reminds me of in 20th century literature? What have I got in my pocket? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what have I got in my pocket? It's like, come on, man, that's not a riddle. That's just an unguessable, like, question. Yeah. There's there's no actual clues in there. It's just, I'll bet you can't guess this. It's like, well, yeah, no kidding. It could be anything. I could start a whole other podcast on why I do not like Bilbo Baggins. But that's another story for another time. So anyway, obviously they can't figure it out. So the 30 Buddies ask Samson's fiance to get the answer from him with her womanly wiles, which she does, uh, because Samson is susceptible to persuasion, like his girlfriend crying for literally a whole week. Wow. <laughs> she, she's basically like, oh, Samson, you obviously don't love me because you won't tell me the solution to the riddle. He's like, I didn't even tell my parents the solution to the riddle. And then she cries for seven days and, he, and then he feels bad and he tells her. And then she tells the dudes... They tell him the answer to the riddle, and then he gets all pissy about it. He gets really angry about it and kills 30 people, steals their clothes, and gives them to his friends. Anyway, this didn't really, you know, sit well with his fiance's family or his fiance or his 30 buddies. So Samson's fiance was given, and that's the word used, given, to one of the 30 guys. This makes Samson really angry, so angry that he captures... 300 foxes, ties them together in pairs by the tail with torches between the tails, and he sets them free in the wheat fields during wheat harvest. Yeah, so for those keeping score at home, we have an unfair riddle mm -hmm. that is solved through equally unfair means because, hey, turnabout is fair play, <laughs> which is then responded to by mass murder and crop destruction and, and animal, animal cruelty as well. Yeah. Um... <laughs> And then this this is a part that I feel like I'm missing a bit of cultural context here. The Philistines, because it was they heard it was Samson's ex fiance's idea, they then set the fiance and her dad on fire because it was Samson's idea to set the foxes loose in the fields with torches on the tails. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I am missing something there. There's a thing I'm missing. There's, I, I don't. there's a lot of. There's a lot of like mythic stuff in here. Um, yeah, but even for mythic stuff, like I am yeah, missing a key it's... bit of cultural context here. Yeah, there's I mean, well, <laughs> I, I don't think there's a whole lot more context than the ancient world was a cruel and brutal place that was hard on women. Yeah, I guess. And their dads. Yeah. The dad is what gets me like uh, anyway. So Samson then just kills a bunch of people. Well, he, OK, hang on. OK, he's okay. probably seen as being responsible for her. But she was given to another guy. Like, they never actually sealed the deal and got married. I think if they had married. actually finished the wedding, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I'm guessing here. but They didn't, though, because he was, she was given to one of his friends. Anyway, that's a bit I don't get. I might be missing yeah. something. I don't know. So then Samson kills a whole bunch of other people, I guess, for fun or out of angry because he's hulking out. And then he just goes to live in a cave because he figures that's his lot in life, I guess. And then 3,000 men from Judea come and arrest Samson and tie him up. And then uh, he's like, oh, okay, I guess I did. I guess I did a bad thing. Oh, no. But you're not going to kill me, right? And they're like, nah, we're just going to kind of tie you up. And then he's like, okay. And then a whole bunch of Philistines come at them yelling and being generally loud. Uh, Samson busts on out of the ropes and kills a thousand of them with a, a donkey's jawbone and then makes a pun about it and is like aha i made butts of you guys by killing you guys with a donkey's jawbone aha ha, donkey and butt jokes and then he asks god for something to drink because he's really thirsty and god gives him something to drink out of the ground <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> this is again one of those things where it's like 
Yeah, ancient mm. people kind of saw God a little differently. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is one of those passages in the Old Testament where perhaps the picture it's painting of God doesn't quite line up with yeah. uh, what we as Christians understand through Jesus. Yeah, this so, particular instance as well also parallels a lot with uh, the myth of Heracles, which I'll get a little bit more into later. Yeah. So, uh, Samson, it, it's not entirely clear why at this point. Oh, no, wait, I, I remember why at this point. He goes to sleep with a prostitute, and a bunch of people don't like him and are angry at him, and, and they they try to seal him into the city by, you know, closing the gates or hanging out by the gates or whatever. So he just picks up the gates and moves them up on a hill. <laughs> he does a, a big old destroy and just picks up the gates and moves them, uh, which makes a lot of people angry. Samson then proceeds to fall in love at first sight, as he is so prone to do, with a lady named Delilah. The angry people offer Delilah a lot of money to find out how to make Samson not strong anymore. How yeah, to the, the angry people in this him. case being the Philistines. Yes. Delilah tries to figure it out by, uh, I, I guess, using Asking her him mostly. To just asking. There there are a lot of stories We can get into this I a little bit in the next section, yeah. but yeah, let's let's finish with the and then we yeah. can get into the summary so, and we can get into the analysis lies samson told delilah about how to unstrung him you can tie him up with seven fresh bowstrings which she tries it doesn't work you can tie him up with a brand new never before used rope she tries it it doesn't work you can weave his hair into a loom in a very specific way that i don't entirely get it has to do with the number seven a whole bunch uh that also doesn't work and then he finally breaks down and he's like, you just got to give me a haircut. So she's like, okay. She brushes his hair with her fingers until he falls asleep. And then a bunch of people pin him down and shave his head. As most of us know, the, the haircut worked uh, and he became yeah, unstrong. Yeah, ends poorly for him. Yes. At this point, his eyes are gouged out and he is made to work in a mill in a prison, grinding flour. And then the Philistines basically have a big party celebration for their idolatrous god, their their fake god. They bring Samson in as entertainment, during which time they mock him and, and mock how strong their god is compared to Samson and Samson's god. And uh, Samson then proceeds to literally bring the house down. He asks to be put between two pillars so that he can feel them and stand up because he's blind now. And uh, he just pulls him right on down, kills everybody, including himself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this kind of gets into, as you can kind of tell from the, the story, not a great role model, right? Very no. violent, um, yeah. very petty, petulant, vicious. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this kind of gets to... In, in some ways kind of parallels like the way that the Pharisees were. There's a lot of this mm. kind of ceremonial like cleanliness, right? He's avoiding yeah. alcohol and touching corpses, as, I guess, except for when he's actually killing people. Yeah. But he's lustful. He's mm -hmm. wrathful. He's prideful. He's just this ball of like id, basically. Yeah. He's just all of this unrestrained impulse and physical power and brutality so he's he's not a great guy um no. <laughs> you've got in the outline his supposed weakness is haircuts but honestly um it seems like women are a greater weakness for him i would say his yeah. own lustfulness is more <laughs> a weakness for him but yeah um it's hypothesized that his eyes were gouged out as a direct response to his lustfulness so that would so make like, sense oh, that's an appropriate you're, you're punishment at, there you you're falling in love at first sight a whole lot, supposedly. Uh, you can't see anymore. Yeah. No falling yeah. in love at first sight if you can't see anymore. Yep. I, blinding people was a pretty common yeah. dominance punishment back in the... I mean, there's a... I forget his name, but there's the king who has his sons put to death in front of him and then has his eyes gouged out. Also yeah, in the Old yeah. Testament. That was, that's, that was a common form of cruelty back then. Mm -hmm. Um it's also, it, it kind of bears mentioning, it's hard to talk about Samson without bringing up Delilah, even though she's a relatively small part of the story. She mm -hmm. only shows up in the last chapter, and even then, not for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But this is this is a little bit of like a modern gloss on it. But mm -hmm. it's hard for me, <laughs> with my 21st century eyes, to read this story and not see him as like kind of this creeper mm -hmm. who she's trying doesn't want the advances from and is trying to figure out how to get rid of him in some yeah. ways like, and since he there clearly... weren't a lot of 
options for that back in the old days. Yeah. She had to go pretty hard. Mm hmm. Like, women were so much property. Yeah. Like, it talks earlier in, in the story about Samson's fiance basically just being given to somebody else. Like, women were property of men, and so there weren't many repercussions for creepers. Yeah. <laughs> really. In fact, I suppose it was sort of encouraged, which is horrifying oh, to think about uh, in its own way. Yeah. So... That said, I mean, Delilah probably wasn't the greatest person either. You know, this no. is this is one of those things where it's like, once again, this is not the story of Joseph where you have a pretty straightforwardly upright and virtuous person. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the, the book of Judges, there's a lot of skullduggery. There's a lot of covert action. There's a lot mm -hmm. of backstabbing, betrayal, dirty moves, you know, underhandedness, mm -hmm. um, ruthlessness and brutality. It's that's that's the whole book of Judges. Read it sometime. People get killed with tent stakes. People get stabbed with hidden weapons. It's it's a rough book. So she was definitely not a nice person, but she was definitely smart and she was definitely persistent. And if we're going to look at this with gamer goggles on, that makes for an interesting villain. However, as a GM, you got to be careful with that stuff, right? Yeah. The thing is, you're functionally omniscient. You know, it's like you already know all of the weak spots in all of the, the player characters and stuff like that. So if you basically transfer your knowledge to your villains you can make them unbeatable and that isn't fun. You know, you can just like mm -hmm. basically tear your party's legs out from under them via fiat. So if you're going to have somebody who's going to be like tricky and underhanded like this, which can be good, mm -hmm. you just got to be a little cautious about doing that. But that said, if you've got a party of player characters like you would see in high level D&D &D or something like that, a lot of the time the people they're going up against aren't going to be able to take them on. Mm -hmm. straight on you know they're going to be like samson or they're going to be like you know to go to like some some of the greek parallels like heracles or achilles or something you don't want to go straight at these people you're going to lose so some underhandedness makes sense if you're writing plots and stuff i would say be careful about over relying on it but definitely make sure that that's a tool in your box some people kind of insist that Samson and Delilah were sleeping together, but there's really nothing in the text that strongly indicates that. We know mm -hmm. that he did definitely go after a prostitute. He was a lustful dude, but she may have just been courting him or trying to fend him off or talking with him or sent in to just kind of like string him along and try and find his weakness. There's mm -hmm. a lot of potential interpretations there and like I said, it's a small chunk of text. You got to kind of be careful about reading too much or I suppose too little into it. So it may be kind of unfair to compare her to like Matahari or something, or perhaps not. We don't know for sure. It's also assumed that she was a Philistine, but her name is Hebrew. So she may have been a traitor or a double agent. You've got yeah. you've got some other like mythical cross references here. Do you want to mm -hmm. unpack that a little bit, Jenny? Yeah, or? for sure. For sure. So, so Samson, like the, just the name Samson. It, there's a lot of sun imagery related to Samson. His his name has like the meaning like sun in it, which re relates into a lot of imagery seen with Enkidu and Heracles in their own respective mythologies. Heracles and Samson's stories have a lot of similar events that happen, like Heracles killing a lion, Heracles finding water after getting really thirsty after killing a bunch of people, um, the same kinds of brutality and the super strength angle. So uh, a lot of people actually li like don't think that Samson is real, or if he was real, a lot of his story is fake. Um, there is for sure like a lot of possible hyperbole in there because a lot of ancient Jewish storytelling traditions rely on hyperbole. There are some uh, Jewish stories that say he had feet 60 cubits wide, that whenever his hair rustled, it sounded like thunder, that he could walk from one town to the next town over in a single step, that kind of thing. So so there's uh, there's like the mythology of Samson and there are the biblical texts of Samson. And a lot of them, th there seems to be a little bit of crossover, possibly. His story follows a very specific pattern that was really popular at a certain time in history. Uh, there isn't as much of a moral to his story compared to the rest of the judges. God does not get involved a lot in this one compared to, like, say, Gideon. Like, with Gideon, Gideon talks to God a lot. God gives a lot of signs to Gideon to do the right thing. Samson... It's more like a power source, really, yeah. for him. Samson asks God for water one time. Like, that is Samson himself. Like, he gets involved with God twice. 
God is really just a power source for him. And I and I don't see Samson thinking of him as, as anything more than that. The, yeah, the he's closest... certainly not somebody like David who is yeah. like very dedicated to God and is trying mm-hmm. to follow him and stuff. This is kind of something that Samson's supposed like holiness or um, divine blessing is very much a thing that was done to Samson yeah. when he was born. Yeah, which is not a common thing, by the way. Uh, Nazarites are supposed to go into it voluntarily, which almost makes me wonder if either Samson had an inflated view of his own greatness. Like he's been told from birth, like, oh, you're going to be great if you do X, Y, Z, which he does in order to be great, not to serve God or to serve you know right. the people he's really selfish about the things that he does well lustful wrathful prideful again <laughs> yep um the, the closest thing that we can get for a moral from this is a moral that was really common in a lot of folk tales of the time which is don't date foreigners be xenophobic because they are going to you know turn around and stab you in the back So Samson's story is a lot different from most of the other judges. I think of it as, this is going to be phrasing it not quite the way I want, but it's less wholly intrinsic. Like it's, it's less interested in Samson's holiness and less interested in God's holiness than it is in painting foreigners as awful. And Samson is just a huge wrecking machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a superhero story, and it's much more about the superhero than the source of his power. Yeah, a couple other things in in gaming that we can kind of pull out of this story. So, yeah, obviously, like along with Conan and stuff, Samson is a an archetypal barbarian. Yeah, kind of the the berserk, unbelievably strong, mm-hmm. crushing maniac, a little amoral. They talk about his rage a lot, like yeah. like he rages out and sets things on fire. <laughs> yeah, and smashes things and rips gates off and tears lions apart and kills a thousand people with a bone. And yeah, yeah. it's 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 real brutal. Mm-hmm. And he's he's also got that kind of common barbarian thing that you see where it's like where he can't brutalize or smash his way through. He cheats or he's duplicitous. You know, there's that real kind of amoral thing to him. Surprisingly, he's also somehow too trusting, specifically with the women that he's fallen for. Mm -hmm. He's the annoying kind of chaotic neutral. Uh, Let's just call it what it is. Yep. That said, there's, there's a decent amount of value to be taken out of this story if you use it as a cautionary tale. Yeah. Samson is a very good example of a lot of things not to do. Gideon is a little bit too, but not nearly to the extent of Samson. He's yeah. he's really kind of a pretty bad dude. Mm-hmm. Some examples of things that we can take out of the story, and we've got these all kind of as like a series of exhortations here. <laughs> so please strategize. Don't just be impulsive and, you know, brutal and stuff. Think about what you're going to do. Um, please please yeah. think about what you're actually doing before you do it, because... Your actions have consequences for other undeserving people. Yeah. And that's actually another thing that we kind of run up against in here is he just straight up kills a lot of people out of convenience. It's like indiscriminately. Those 30 people that he took the clothes from after he got cheated out of his own cheaterly lion bet probably (laughs) were just minding their own business based on the story. And then, you know, just kind of in general, please, in real life, at the very least, don't be a brutal, amoral jerk and a bully. Please don't don't make inappropriate jokes. (laughs) Yeah. And GMs, be fair and kind in your riddle making. Give your players the tools to figure out the puzzles if you're going to make puzzles. And like puzzles can be great, but like this is actually a, a big thing that I've seen a lot. It's like, oh, my players can't figure out my puzzles. Why? It's like, are you giving them the tools to figure out your puzzles? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or have you hidden necessary information that you have and they don't? Yeah. Be kind. Be fair. Yeah. Be merciful. <laughs> be merciful and good and kind think and nice. Of, think Just of, be a good person. <laughs> yeah. Don't be like Samson, people. Yes. <laughs> don't do that. Yep. Got anything else here, Jenny? Or Not really. We, yeah. Yeah. This was less gameable than I thought. It yeah. Be. Yeah. It really kind of so shockingly yeah. like. I mean, I suppose in some ways you can you can actually use him as a villain, too, because this is definitely like the unstoppable force of nature kind of, you know, just superhuman wrecking machine that has to be contained. But he's even then, like we're talking about a man sized Tarrasque here, you know, it's just it's not there's not a lot of like 
There's not a lot of nuance to Samson. No, <laughs> there really isn't. Just Samson, no. <laughs> yeah, Samson, no. The entire story of Samson is Samson, no. Samson, yes. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> and on that note, I think yeah. we're going to wrap this one here. So uh-huh. like a lot of these, this one's a little bit shorter, but yep. hopefully next time we will have three healthy hosts and we'll be able to come back for a full length episode. Yes. We have been discussing some kind of interesting and cool stuff and perhaps some neat guest hosts. So keep yeah. your eyes on the feed and uh, have a good one. And wait, we will wait, see you Peter, next time. Peter, did we were we going to talk about uh, the City on the Hill gaming thing? Did we talk about that yet? I don't think we did. Guess it'll have to wait for next time. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See ya. This podcast episode is a production of Saving the Game and may be redistributed under a Creative Commons non-commercial, non-derivative license, so long as appropriate credit is given. Our music is by Ryan Humphrey. Saving the Game is syndicated through inroadsministries.com, rpgpodcasts.com, stitcher.com and itunes to hear past episodes and to connect with us or our community of listeners visit our website at savingthegamepodcast.org god bless and happy gaming